I stole the server from my brother. He was cleaning his house and he dumped this machine in my workshop to store it or just to get rid of it. So I didn't tell him but I took it home because we're gonna make a video about this machine. This video is sponsored by my long term sponsor PCBWay. If you want your circuit boards designed, realized and printed you should check out PCBWay. Starting prices as low as $5 for a one or two layer design. Place your order now, links in the description. Hi my name is Victor Bart and welcome to Retro Machines. And this is a super micro machine and what I like about many super micro machines is that it is uh, built with pretty standard parts and also this machine is. So let's take a look what we have here and see what we can upgrade and what we can do with a box like this. This machine is designed as a storage box because we have 16 drive bays. All the slats are included and this is for SAS and SATA drives. And as you can see there is not a CD-ROM player or anything else because it doesn't fit in here. They even had to put a power button here on the side handle and the status LEDs. So the box itself is just pure hard drives in the front. In the rear we have two hot swappable power supplies, 900 watts each. So that's more than enough for a system like this. The motherboard looks like a standard ATX layout, not a proprietary motherboard. Because we have the normal expansion slots, the I.O. shield is installed, PS2, USB, COM, VGA and two network uh, ports. It's a dual CPU motherboard with one CPU installed, there's memory installed, one expansion card. The fans are hot swappable. And this is a pretty standard fan, it's a little bit bigger, but a normal 4 pin connector. So if this fan fails and you cannot find this exact fan, you can just put another fan in and put the connector here and still use it. And that's what I like so much about Supermicro, that it doesn't use a proprietary fan solution like HP or Dell where you only can get their fans and if you put something else in an HP for example the machine starts screaming because it's in error mode. So for hobbyists at home Super Micro is a good uh, brand uh, to have. Let's remove these fans to get this air duct out. And you need this air duct because the CPU here does have active cooling and now the air from the front is redirected over the CPUs, over the memory, outside of the rear. So this is really important to have, otherwise you need to have active cooling on your CPU. We have 4 sticks of this low profile uh, server memory, 2 GB each DDR2667 each C registered. So 8 GB of memory in this system. Not that much. I have a lot of server memory like this, DDR2 4 GB sticks. But the notches are different and this is just a different style of memory module and this doesn't work on this motherboard. This just uses standard ECC register. Look what I just have laying around. A second cooler for this system. <laughs> so we can uh, make a dual CPU system if we want. But to be honest. I think I have different plans for this system. But let's see what uh, this video will bring. So let's take the only expansion card out. And it has a single cable to the front, a single SAS cable. So I think the front has like SAS expander built in. So we have, let's see, an AMCC SAS controller. I never had something like this before. But probably it will work in this system, otherwise it wouldn't be in it. Oh, AMCC N1613. But let's put it back for now, before I pull the machine completely apart, before trying it out. The motherboard has three normal 32-bit PCI slots, but not PCI64. We have a floppy connector, IDE. There could be on here a SAS controller on the motherboard, but it's not soldered on. Also the connectors are not soldered on. Here we have the six normal SATA connectors. We have three PCIe 8x slots. Not sure if they all wired in 8x, but physically they are 8x slots. 
the chipset cooler, the two CPU sockets with of course one cooler installed, the other one is nicely blanked off. Six uh, memory modules can be installed. The motherboard has standard 4 pin fan uh, connectors, so no proprietary stuff inside of this machine. Here we have a 24 pin power connector and an uh, 8 pin. And luckily also on here in the uh, cable bundle also on 4 pin. With the normal ATX power connections, the normal fan connection and the normal ATX layout. What I would do if this was my machine, take out this old motherboard. Because this is a dual socket 771 with DDR2. And put something way more powerful and modern in it which is also way less power and this system can then be turned in a very cool uh, file server with 16 hard drives not like a high speed solution but more like a long term storage or a backup system or something like that the front drive unit is one unit everything is connected through one PCB here the SAS cable goes in here and goes to this connector. You also have a second and a third connector, but that's probably for daisy chaining. And maybe if you put more cables in it, the SAS expander will use more lanes. It's nice to see that you just can use one cable to the front unit, but this is probably not a high performance server, but more like an, an archival server or backup server where the speed is less of an importance over uh, like the amount of storage that you can put in and the nice thing about the SAS expander is you only need a simple SAS controller with one port and also one cable instead of a four port card with four cables which makes everything more expensive Okay, the power supplies are both working, but the system is still off, so it's already cooling the power supplies. Let's press the power button. And it makes a lot of noise! Ah, a three-wear controller. With weight. The system turned on without any errors. 8 uh, gigabytes of memory installed and 2 gigahertz CPU but it doesn't say which one it is here and it has Intel fertilization technology ok here it says the 3 PCI slots and the 3 PCIe slots one is only 4 times and two are 8 times let's see what kind of CPU we have because it was not stated in the BIOS That's better, because this system makes a lot of noise, but I made a picture of the info screen, so we can see what kind of CPU we have. Intel Xeon E5405, uh, 2 GHz, uh, with 4 cores. It's a pretty decent CPU, but I think it's a lower end CPU out of that era. But we can install a second CPU or two way faster CPUs, but I think you can better just upgrade to something completely new or completely overkill or should I upgrade to this super micro motherboard I think this is the bigger brother of the tiny motherboard that was inside of this machine and this directly uh, will fit in this machine and probably all the connectors to the front uh, power button everything just plugs in this motherboard has two 4520 CPUs, those are 4 cores running at 2.5 GHz. So what I also can do is take out this CPU and put it in this machine. But this machine has 64 GB of the other style of memory. And 4 PCIe slots, 2 PCI uh, 64 bit slots, here also SATA, floppy, IDE. This motherboard doesn't have an extra SAS controller, but enough. 
expansion slots to put something in and this board uses all the power connections and to be honest I think this chassis is more designed with the big power supplies for something like this than what is uh, right now inside but as a file server both of those boards doesn't make that much sense but the 4505 that's currently in single CPU with the 8 gigabyte of memory is probably low power enough that it does make sense to keep it in. I think this machine from around 2007 has great potential to be a nice file server, not a high speed one, more a Kaifal backup server, only the motherboard. I think this big one doesn't make any sense. And I talked with my brother about what he wanted to do with this machine and he liked it as a file server but his problem was he was thinking it might use too much power. The current CPU of this motherboard is an 80 watt CPU and I found out that I can buy for like 10 euros an L variant of uh, this kind of CPU which is higher clock but lower front side bus and that's only 40 watt per CPU and a single CPU for file server is fine. So that could be an option to just get the 40 watt CPU for it and like uh, some more memory and just fill it up with hard drives and just use it as a backup server and then turn it off. The other option to do is, and what I would do if I uh, was the owner of this machine, was replace the complete motherboard for something else. But here I need your advice because I'm quite out of the market for low power solutions for servers. And maybe you can recommend a motherboard uh, what can fit in here and maybe I can also research it if I can put it in my current file server to replace my dual socket 2011 <laughs> yeah probably that could be replaced for something way better and low power right now with the current energy prices what I would prefer on a motherboard is like a quad core low power uh, good memory support like at least 64 gigabyte with ECC and preferably 128 and at least two PCIe slots like 8 times slots or 16 times slots so you can install 10 gig network card and you need a SAS controller so that also takes a slot. This SAS controller right now is a RAID uh, controller that doesn't work uh, well with ZFS so if I would install a ZFS based file uh, system on the server. I would prefer an IBM 1015 controller in IT mode so the drives are directly passed through to the operating system with ZFS and then you would have a really nice server I think. Only thing that is probably really uh, annoying is making the power button work and the LEDs. So you probably need to find the pin layout and make like a jumper cable block or something like that. And I would replace the 8 cm fence with probably Noctua fence. So it has less airflow but also uh, less noise. And if you have like a low power solution in a system like this, that is probably more than enough. And also in my current file server I replaced the big fence with Noctua's and that works great. Only the power supply, I'm not sure about it because it has 40 uh, millimeter fans and it uh, can scream <laughs> a lot and it's way overkill for a simple file server. Probably if you take it out and you uh, can find a slimline uh, power supply that would make the noise level a lot lower. But if you put this system away in a closet or something where you don't really hear it, it's fine that it makes more noise because you turn it off after you back up your uh, main storage or something like that. So let me know in the comments what would you build out of this system, with uh, what part would you replace and what should I do with this system. 
should I just fill it up with 500 gigabyte hard drives and just see where it ends up and install uh, like a true NAS or something like that. Let me know what you would like to see with this machine before I give it back to my brother because I think this machine has good potential, it has standard parts so this one is a keeper. If you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon and get access to my awesome Discord server or use my Amazon affiliated links. And thanks for watching.